Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us tonight for our special first ever virtual event, Projecting Resilience, to introduce you to our amazing Core Africa volunteers and ask for your support of their projects that build resilient communities in Africa. Throughout this global pandemic, they have put their projects on hold and quickly pivoted to crisis response, bringing supplies and information to the local people in their time of need. During the lockdown, they have been reworking their project proposals and making sure that they help communities recover from the crisis and build back even stronger, ensuring their resilience to help them weather future crises. We're thrilled to put this together for you. It's not fancy, just videos mostly taken on cell phones and Zoom, but it is real and it's sincere and it's a window into the world of the Core Africa volunteers. I've been telling you about them for years and so excited for you to meet them. Our goal tonight is to raise $50,000 for life-changing opportunities across Morocco, Senegal, Malawi, and Rwanda. Your contributions are fully tax deductible and every gift makes a positive impact on the lives of the people we serve. I am honored to introduce this evening's master of ceremony, Pierre Chem. Pierre is a distinguished chef, author and social activist and member of the Core Africa Board of Directors. A native of Senegal, Pierre has had a storied career with highlights including cooking for the King of Morocco, French President Emmanuel Macron and former Secretary General, UN Secretary General Ben Ki-moon. Through his advocacy and many media appearances, he had become known as a culinary ambassador dedicated to promoting West African cooking throughout the world. His TED Talk, given at TED Global 2017 in Arusha, Tanzania, has been viewed over one million times. Pierre's dedication to promoting West African cooking and his advocation for smallholder farmers in the Sahel embodies our values here at Core Africa. And it is an honor to have him serving on our board of directors. Pierre created the recipes for the Casamont salad and hibiscus and rum cocktail, which we shared in advance. I hope you've had a chance to make them using some of Pierre's Yolele Fonio, of course. Maybe you're even enjoying them right now. Cheers. And here's Pierre. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Liz, for this wonderful introduction. I am so honored to serve on Core Africa board and to host this evening. I hope you're enjoying the salad. Fonio is a highly nutritious, gluten-free grain that grows in harsh conditions. It's not just my personal passion, but also a symbol of why Core Africa is important. Last year, one of the volunteers created a women-led cooperatives in rural Senegal to grow and process and sell Fonio. Fonio already existed there. It's not like she had to bring an outside resources. She used locally product that they already know. And this is what Core Africa is about. This is the Africa I know, a continent full of talent, potential and hope. Core Africa is promoting and showcasing this Africa by recruiting and training young, educated Africans to serve locally and see themselves as leaders and change makers for their countries. Core Africa is unique because it gives volunteers an opportunity to be a part of the solution in their own country. Especially in this time of COVID-19, we need to look for solutions from within. Tonight you will meet some of my dedicated board colleagues, the staff from the offices in Morocco, Rwanda, Malawi, and Senegal. And we are thrilled to have Kerry McNamara from the OCP group speak to us about their commitment. I invite you to join, to join them and me in supporting Core Africa. Every contribution is an investment in the future. I joined Co-Africa because I want to work directly with communities and gain experience in managing projects. So being in the community and being with the people and living their lives is a way that you're actually going to see the problems and ask them and try to find solutions together with them. 
I want to be able to experience life from those that live in the village. And in that way, I'll be able to adapt and I'll be able to gain some knowledge as well as some values that I didn't know I possessed and I should be able to lead a different life altogether. I like the approach that Co Africa uses. That is the problem that Africans are facing and the solutions actually from the Africans themselves. And wherever I go, I will still use this experience to impact the lives of men in, in my country. I'm a Malawian and I can help my country one household at a time. I'm a Malawian and I can help my country one household at a time. I'm a Malawian and I can help my country one household at a time. And I can catalyze change. I can develop my country. And I can help my And I can catalyze change. I can develop my country. It begins with me. Isn't that inspiring? Core Africa owes its remarkable success to its amazing, tireless committee staff in Morocco, Senegal, Rwanda, and Malawi. They are the ones who make all of this possible. Please meet them briefly here. Hello, my name is Bora, and I'm president of the board of directors for Core Africa Morocco. I'm Brian Silsa, the secretary general of the board of directors for Core Africa. This is Fatima Kab, Program Coordinator. Hi. And Mr. Abdelaziz Nujoum, Senior Field and Training Coordinator. Hi. I'm Nurisar Country Director of Africa Senegal. I have the pleasure to introduce my staff. Hello, my name is Marem Nour. Hello, my name is Sherif Kouri. Hello, my name is Abdou Sissé. My name is Billy Silva. Hello, my name is Mouli Janbay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Arthur Nkosi, I'm the Country Director for Core Africa Malawi and this is the team from the Core Africa Malawi staff. Hi, I'm Mr. Kise Zibela, Country Director of Core Africa in Rwanda. Hi, I'm Mr. Raymond, Deputy Director of Core Africa Rwanda. Hi, I'm Innocent Mitawasi. I'm Kanimba Balas. Bookkeeper of Cops Africa Rwanda. Let's meet the volunteers, shall we? Hello, my name is Mohamed Mbai. Asma Barkia. Chugebo Munichanya. I'm Mojedo Masingi. Maude Silla. Hi, I'm Masere Demta. I'm by name Zuvumunda Ali Benir. I'm Sandrin. Al Isim Ali Aksim. Bonjour, je m'appelle Amadou Fahal. I'm Benjamin Nutira. Dorothy Mabira. I'm Grace Ngabiri. Hello, I'm Karen Foster. Padma Tamasali. I'm Justin from Rwanda. Je suis la volontaire Marie Madeleine Mendi. I'm Israel Nyong Denga. I'm Inta Faye. Je suis de Juaga. I am Migan Bijon. I'm Sepe Swartz. Eric Kuleriman. Barakamara. Lamin Fati. Amiga Mia. Bonjour, je m'appelle Sambagay. My name is Alexandre. I'm Isaac Nenyejo. Bushra Zin. I'm Claude Nayambaji. Abu Bakar Salimba. Maria Mbani Alfaye. Redouan Hama. Hi, I'm Cecile from Rwanda. Jal Wardi. Hi, I'm Muneza from Rwanda. I am Febu Neza. Hadi Jamila. Bonjour, Papsa Nufaye. Comme je l'ai dit. Diana Owimuwe. Je m'appelle Ousmane Ndiaye. Liliane Asin. Angela Chizemba. Bonjour, je suis Bandai Fal. Hi, my name is Elisa Yaniga. They inspire me so much. We wanted to give you a chance to hear a bit more from the volunteers directly. So we've asked them a few questions and we'll share their responses over the course of the show. Here is my first question.
I joined Go Africa because this was a new way to challenge myself to learn about development and as well as to serve my community. As young people, we have a role to play in serving and in bringing about change in our local communities. Je choisi tout d'abord parce que je voulais vivre une expérience transformative, découvrir ce que les communautés avaient à offrir, les dynamismes et les différents aspects culturels et socio-économiques qui, 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 qui se trouvent. Proposer à travers mes compétences acquises dans les écoles de formation, les proposer à la communauté et mettre toute cette, toutes ces compétences-là au service de la communauté pour enfin atteindre ce qu'on appelle les objectifs de développement durable. It has always been my heart desire to be a voice to the voiceless, a mouthpiece to the neglected. Co Africa Malawi to me is like a platform to directly work with community members on different development projects that will positively impact their lives. Je reviens à Co Africa pour deux raisons. D'abord, c'est pour gagner de l'expérience communautaire. Parce que euh, je me suis toujours dit que je ferais un métier, un boulot qui me permettrait d'être utile à la communauté. Et j'ai vu cela chez Core Africa. Et la raison pour laquelle je me suis dit que pourquoi ne pas se lancer donc, dans cette initiative aussi noble, aussi modeste que Core Africa. I joined Core Africa because I always want to serve in my country and help in the process of change. Uh, so, and now for our first volunteer project pitch introduced by board member Omar Lafura. Welcome Omar. Hello, my name is Omar Lafura and I am a member of the board of directors for Core Africa. I've been with the organization since the very beginning and I'm delighted to, to, have, to have had this opportunity and I'm very pleased to share with you the work that we do. Um, I'm delighted to introduce Samba Guy's water access and distribution project in Morocco. Samba is what we call an exchange volunteer. He's Senegalese, he served in Senegal two years ago and then applied to serve in another Core Africa country, in this case Morocco, where I am right now. And he, so he served here in a small village in the High Atlas Mountains and he has been working on a project that will ensure that every home in his village has access to clean drinking water. Unfortunately, Samba had to return to Senegal during the COVID crisis due to administrative and travel restrictions. But luckily, his Moroccan Core Africa colleague, Radwan Hema, is there at the site and will help to finish the project. Please take some time to check it out. And also, please consider underwriting this important project that will surely change the lives of many people in Samba's village. Thank you. Bonjour, je m'appelle Samba Gay, je suis de nationalité sénégalaise, j'ai fait une formation en droit. Cette année, je suis volontaire pour Africa au Maroc, dans la région de Marrakech, dans le village de Enmet. Je suis avec Cor Africa dans le village de Enmet. J'ai organisé plusieurs réunions communautaires avec la population. Ainsi, lors de ces réunions, trois besoins ont été identifiés. Le premier besoin, c'était la construction d'une salle de classe. Ensuite, on avait un autre besoin qui consiste à faciliter l'accès à l'eau potable dans le village. Et enfin, on avait un autre besoin de construction d'une unité de transformation des produits locaux pour les femmes du village de 1 mètre. Ainsi, grâce à la méthode du design thinking de classification des besoins communautaires, 
la population avait choisi avec moi de mettre en place un projet de construction d'un réservoir à eau potable et de blanchiment des robinets à domicile dans toutes les maisons du village. Le premier objectif, c'est de faire la formation pour un jeune du village en plomberie, mais aussi de créer de l'emploi pour ce jeune. L'autre chose, ce projet va faciliter l'accès à l'eau potable parce que les femmes du village pour avoir de l'eau sont obligées de descendre des montagnes pour puiser de l'eau dans les robinets et remonter vers leur thé. Ainsi, le budget total du projet s'élève à 3626 dollars. La deuxième partie sera gérée par la population et s'élève à 1202 dollars, soit 31,6% du budget total. Pour la durabilité du projet, il faut noter que depuis notre première réunion dans le village de Hunmet, on a mis en place une équipe de gestion du projet. Cette équipe est composée des membres de l'association du village, mais aussi des membres de toutes les familles du village. Comme vous le savez, ce projet, dans ce projet, il est prévu pour la population de payer chaque mois 10 dirhams. Ces 10 dirhams, c'est des fonds qui seront versés dans un compte bancaire pour pouvoir réaliser d'autres projets dans l'avenir, comme la construction d'une salle de classe, mais aussi comme la construction euh, d'une unité de transformation dans le village de Hunmet. Donc c'est ça le projet euh, de construction d'un réservoir à eau potable dans le village de Hunmet. Je vous remercie. To make your gift for this one or many community projects ready to be funded, please visit our donation page at www.coreafrica.org. Here is another question for our volunteers. Ce qui m'a impressionné, c'est la capacité de résilience des populations. La manière dont ils ont créé des lave-mains avec euh, du matériel local, les ressources qu'ils qu ont à la main. Better hygiene is no longer just a good habit, but the very skill that everyone needs for survival. These times have taught the community members how to stay more hygienically. I am very convinced that they have had a lifestyle change for good. What really impressed me about my community during the COVID-19 crisis is their discipline. They totally followed the authorities orders during the lockdown, they stayed home, they just go out for emergency cases, they wear their face masks and all the things needed. Et pour cela, jusqu'à présent, malgré qu'il y a certaines mesures qui sont bafouées, mais nous essayons de leur faire comprendre que cette maladie n'est pas juste mise en place par l'État, mais ça existe au niveau mondial. On the part of the, the, the group village headmans. So these guys were upfront in confronting community members to, to follow the, um, the preventive measures. Uh, you talk of, you know, uh, not allowing uh, crowded uh, meetings. How quickly they adopted the whole guidelines in response to COVID-19. Like, for example, the keeping of social distancing, the washing hands with soap, desperate limited resources, uh, the proper way of sneezing, and other guidelines that who provided. So that impressed me most about my community during this crisis. I was impressed in my community with the crisis of COVID, and that in the 47 villages that count my community, no case of COVID-19 has been signaled. I'm glad to say that I've been impressed by the willingness of the people to adhere to COVID-19 preventive measures so that they do 
not contract the disease. Fascinating. And now it's my honor to welcome my board colleague, Carly Hagedorn. Hi, I'm Carly Hagedorn. It's been my honor to serve on the Core Africa board since 2013, and I'm delighted to introduce Marie Celestine's Women's Community Bakery Project in Senegal. This project is particularly um, meaningful to me because I had the honor and privilege to travel to Senegal about a year and a half ago. So I hope you will see the importance of supporting this project. This project comes from a need for a localized place to bake and sell bread and will be especially important for the financial security of local women. I hope you enjoy this video and please consider sponsoring this important project. Thank you. Bonjour, moi c'est Marie Celestine Sagna, volontaire de Corps Africa Senegal, affecté dans le village de Ndorong Malik. Nous avons choisi comme idée de projet l'implantation d'un mini boulangerie dans le village de Ndorong Malik. L'idée nous est venue après différentes réunions communautaires dans le village, une forte demande de pain. Et cela est une force pour le, le projet parce qu'il envisage l'amélioration des conditions économiques de la femme. D'abord, il y a une très forte demande de pain dans la zone et ce qui est économiquement bien pour le projet parce qu'il vise à l'amélioration des conditions économiques de ces braves femmes dont vous voyez. Et dans le village, nous consommons 150 à 200 baguettes de pain par jour. Et nous n'avons pas de boulangerie dans le village, ni les villages d'alentour. Le, euh, le projet aussi cherche à réduire les retards des enfants à l'école le matin, mais aussi il envisage dans le futur à prendre les recettes que nous donnera notre mini boulangerie pour l'implantation d'une unité de transformation des produits locaux dans le futur. À la suite de plusieurs réunions communautaires que nous avons facilité en tant que volontaires de Corps Africa Sénégal, toute la communauté s'est entendue sur ce projet avec un engagement exemplaire du marabout qui nous a octroyé un terrain de 250 mètres carrés pour euh, l'implantation de la mini boulangerie. Euh, L'équipe qui dirigera la boulangerie, là je peux vous dire que la boulangerie sera dirigée par le GIE Andri Soukhali Sounougo de Ndorong Malik, en partenariat avec cinq hommes choisis dans le village de façon bénévole pour accompagner ces braves femmes dans l'utilisation de certains matériels techniques lourds. Et aussi une équipe de pilotage sera mise en, en, en place pour vraiment la bonne marche de la boulangerie. Le coût global de ce projet est de 5 681 272 francs. Et je vous assure que la communauté a déjà apporté une contribution de 192 325 francs pour la construction du clôture. Euh, mais aussi la municipalité ne nous a pas laissé tomber parce qu'en tant que volontaires de Corps Africa, nous avons fait un plaidoyer au niveau de la municipalité et la municipalité nous a aidés avec un don de 4 tonnes de ciment pour le démarrage des travaux. Aider ma communauté à obtenir ce financement de 4 681 272 francs. Vous participerez ainsi à la construction d'une histoire de développement endogène incroyable parce que ces braves femmes dont vous voyez, elles sont vraiment engagées. Thank you so much, Carly and Marie Celestine. Access to clean water and health giving food are so elemental. As you tune in, I hope you will support this or one of our many other projects. Here is another question for our volunteer. Okay, 
in my opinion a resilient community is the community who is able to use what it has to produce what it needs for me a resilient community uh, is a community that is willing and able to adapt to changing circumstances uh, especially during times of crisis. Uh, for example, now that we're facing the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, Eurasian community is the one that is um, doing all it can to stop the spread of the virus in its community and to make sure that its members are safe and it, to make sure that uh, it continues thriving. A community resilient signifies the capacity of a group of people structured, like a GE, to develop, to s'épanouir à s'adapter, à créer des initiatives économiques. By implementing community resilient plan, uh, a community can come together and overcome any disaster while rebuilding economically and physically. Je pense qu'une communauté résiliente est une communauté qui face à toute situation essaie de trouver des solutions à partir des moyens de base sans attendre quoi que ce soit de qui que ce soit. A resilient community is the one that resists and uh, accommodates and adapts with the challenges in an effective way. Communauté résiliente, c'est une communauté qui sait faire face aux chocs externes. C'est-à-dire que c'est une communauté qui, quand il y a un problème qui arrive et qui fait que ce qu'ils avaient l'habitude de faire, leurs activités qu'ils avaient l'habitude de faire, est impacté d'une certaine manière. Cette communauté est appelée résiliente si elle elle est capable de trouver des réponses, des solutions à ce problème-là, de manière à pouvoir continuer leurs activités comme elles comme elle le souhaitent, sans pour autant que, voilà, qu'elles qu soient handicapées, en, en fait. The resilience in my community is depends on how they want to work for the betterment of their society, of their community. So they know their problems and they know that they are the ones to fight for them. They are the ones who wants who owns the solutions of the problems they, they are meeting. They don't really depend on others. They work on their own being able to withstand the challenges that may come. Interesting. And now it's my pleasure to welcome our board colleague, Craig Kennedy. Hello, my name is Craig Kennedy. I'm a new and proud board member of Core Africa. Today I'm introducing one of our initiatives in Malawi, where Dorothy, a Core Africa volunteer, is working on creating a permanent healthcare facility in her community. Chawande is an area with 5,000 people and no permanent health care. Pregnant women and others that need help go to a church once a month when a visiting doctor uh, comes to the community. Dorothy's hope is to create a permanent facility that will also attract a permanent doctor. Thank you. My name is Dorothy Mavira. I'm a Core Africa Malawi volunteer and I'm serving in the northern part of the country, Mzimba district. My community is Chuondwe. Chuondwe, like so many other rural villages in Malawi, has no health facility. So a lot of people travel distances, for example, 10 kilometers just to get to the nearest health center. A lot of people cannot afford the, to walk the distance because sometimes they are sick and sometimes maybe they're being escorted by other people. So the only means of getting there is either on a motorbike, a bicycle, or an ox cart. This problem has been in my community for so long. And so the people decided to come up with an idea of pursuing a project. In 1992, the community, through the help of other missionaries, constructed a clinic where under five uh, children would come and get immunized and even expectant mothers. But from that time, the clinic that was being used collapsed, the roof fell off. So people have struggled for so many years to get a structure, to get a building where they could conduct the under five clinic. 
It is because of this problem in the community that the people now decided to pursue this project. Mr. Winston Ziambu was a volunteer when the clinic started and he is the chairman of Shwondo Community Project Development. He is here to explain about the challenges that they have faced as a community and what they have done to make sure that this project is being implemented. So, around Danny, Kwenderana cha mani kuri kusini fuat kwenderana cha chipata cha boma chiri kuvangara kwenye kusoma kutari so senga kutiwa zima i para barua na ba pakati na kushiranga kuno kumakaya nisho jo kumbikira pani kwa sano mani kama tena ngana ni ndani ndani au gawa ako kutiwa chini kwa makaya yai zina nini ne kafiri ni asulu kumira boma lamzima kuno kushiwa onge ba tau tafsikiro kula kana na dikuwe zgera pawa. Your help will go a long way in making sure that Shwondo community is a safe place to live in and to make sure that the people access medical services at a walkable distance. May God bless you as you make Shwondo a better place to live in. Water, food, and healthcare. As you can see, Core Africa works to bring the most fundamental of human needs and in a way that engages and ignites the people of the village we serve. Rather than pushing people out, out, to accept our projects on a top down basis, we work with the communities to develop opportunities that they need and want. The hardest thing which I had to get used to was being away from my family and friends. But the support and the friendliness of my community members made me to feel at home. My search is a really mountainous area and it really cold, so it was really hard to adapt in the first days, but as they go on, I'm really adapting to the climate and even my side. The hardest thing for me in my side is to have a shortage of water which makes us use water from lakes. <laughs> la chose la plus difficile à laquelle je devais m'adapter dans mon site, c'était de monter à Piroc. Parce que j'ai une peur affreuse des Piroc. J'ai peur de traverser les mers. Donc quand je suis venue ici, le premier jour c'était difficile. J'hésitais beaucoup même à monter à Piroc. Mais à un certain moment, je me suis dit, bon, de toute façon, je vais le faire. Je vais devoir y aller. Parce que les femmes y vont et je suis en train de travailler avec le, les femmes, donc que j'ai peur ou pas. The hardest thing to get your Zutu at my side was the fact that whenever I met someone, he was like, would you please give me some coins? I want to buy something, but I don't have money. At the beginning, I was like, what's wrong with these people? But finally, I found out that it was their way of having or starting a conversation with someone who is new in their village. The hardest thing to get used to in my community is the lack of social activities. Um, of course, throughout the week, everybody's busy uh, working in, in their gardens or in their farms. But Sundays, that's when uh, there are usually football matches. But if you're not a football fan like me, then it means that there, there's little uh, of entertainment activities. I was challenged by the remote area where there are a limited infrastructures like mobile networks, internet connection required to hike a mountain to get connected. We don't have running water in our community. The only source of water is either from the rivers or the borehole. 
So I go to the nearest borehole. But then it was a struggle to get the bucket stand on my head. Like I would carry it and the water would just fall on me. People would laugh at me, say whatever. But yeah, I wasn't used to it because we have running water in towns. But now, I, I should say I'm an expert. Um, I speak Chichewa, uh, which is a native language spoken in most parts of Malawi. Where I'm working, they mostly speak Chitonga and because i've never been exposed to any of that communication was really hard for me and it took me time to get used to the language à laquelle j'ai plus eu de difficulté à m'habituer c'était uh, l'enclavement de mon site so the hardest thing for me to get used to at my site was having to say hello and greet each and every person that I came across with, whether I'm taking walks around the village or I'm going to the market. It is a norm to greet each and every person, regardless of whether you know them or not. La chose qui m'a semblé la plus difficile durant mon intégration était la nourriture, car j'avais du mal à consommer la nourriture locale au tout début. Mais à force de m'adapter, J'ai su aimer la nourriture et aujourd'hui j'en suis même devenu gourmand. <rire> so inspiring. And now it's my honor to to welcome my board colleague, Jocelyn Zuckerman. Hi, I'm Jocelyn Zuckerman, a board member and chair of Core Africa's Development Committee. I am so excited that all of you have this opportunity to meet our amazing volunteers and see them in action. As a former Peace Corps volunteer myself, I've been struck by how similar their experiences are to my own and about the ways in which they find themselves growing and stretching. Justin is one of our Rwandan volunteers who works in a remote village where 97% of the people are employed in agriculture. But frequent heavy rains in the mountainous region tend to wash away the topsoil, making it difficult for farmers to achieve maximum productivity with their crops. That's why the community made the decision to embark on a sheep farming project, which they believe will both help address the malnutrition that affects many people in the area and increase livelihoods so as to help families send their children to school. I hope you enjoy this video and please consider sponsoring Justin's important project. Thank you so much. intego yanjye ari ugufatanya n'abaturage kugira ngo twiteze imbere ikindi tuba facilitating mu guhindura imyumvire maze bagere ku ntego yabo yo kwiteza imbere akarere ka Rutsiro na akarere gafite imisozi miremire cyane kuburyo bigoye cyane kuba izindi organizations cyangwa sindi mishinga yaza kwakorera cyane bahita bigira handi heza ari flat cyangwa se hameze neza bakavuga batakarere ka Rutsiro ntabwo twaza gukorera mu nyine mu byukuri aka karere kobera kagizwe ni nimisozi miremire harakonja cyane ubu bukonje bwa bukunda kutanga imvura nyinshi cyane ku buryo iyo mvura ikunda no kwangiriza imyaka y'abaturage ugasanga habayisuri mu byukuri rero abaturage kugira ngo babone gafumbire nta kindi bakora usibye ubworozi ubworozi rero ni wo mushinga abaturage bifuje ko twafatanya nabo mu gukora byumwe yari ko bahita mu bworozi bw'intama wo mushinga rero kugira ngo tuhitemo twebwe dufatanije n'abaturage twaricaye dukora group mapping exercise turebera hamwe ibyo abaturage bakeneye mushinga bafashe rero yose itandukanye basanze umushinga w'intama ari umushinga mwiza cyane umushinga by'umwe ari ko bavuga batuye umushinga uratuvana mu bukene uyu mushinga ndo hagafumbire by'umwe ari ko ako gafumbire ni tugafata uwo mushinga w'intama ufata nk'igikorwa cyabateza imbere mu mu buryo bwa ari bwo bwose mu buzima bwa gafaranga ndetse ukurihira abana baba amashuri ndetse ukanabafasha no korora kaba kaba bafata ibyana by'intama ibyo byana bakaba babigurisha bakabonamo ayo mafaranga yakomeza kubafasha ndetse bakaba banorozanya ubwo uje kudukura mu bukene ukatuvana ku rwego rumwe ukatugeza mu rundi mbese ukatuzamura ku rwego rwiza cyane uyu mushinga rero dufatanije nabaturage igiciro cyawo twasanze amafaranga yose 
mu Banyarwanda ni miliyoni eshanu ibihumbi magana abiri mirongo cyenda na birindwi mu madorari bigana na madorari angana n’ibihumbi bitanu magana arindwi mirongo itandatu urage bazifasha rero muri uyu mushinga harimo kubona nk’ibiraro byo kubaka kubaka ibiraro byo gushyiramo izo ntama ndetse abaturage bemeye no no kwigurira ikinini cyangwa se imwe mu miti izafasha izo ntama ariko ibyo byose bakazabikura muri contribution bakora buri kwezi uko buri kwezi ikoresho nkenerwa igihe itungo ryaba ryagize ikibazo runaka murakoze cyane We have featured just four of 56 projects that we hope to carry out before the end of the year, even with the challenges faced by the pandemic. The people we serve need us more than ever, and the volunteers have proven their resilience in the face of adversity by staying in their communities throughout the crisis. Hunger, access to healthcare, and need for self-sufficiency have not gone away and it is more important than ever that we stay the course and help those who need us the most. Uh, what I love most about my site is how the community members look at themselves as the solution for their own problems. Uh, the thing that I like most about my community is uh, the environment. Uh, the area is surrounded by a lot of mountains and a lot of trees. So it has this nice weather. Uh, sometimes it's very, it's very cold, but I, I, I like it. And the people, they're just very hardworking and they are always willing to work with me. So it's making my work here very enjoyable. The most thing I loved about my community is working collaboratively and hard, working hard. Ce que j'aime le plus par rapport à mon site, c'est d'abord la solidarité que j'ai trouvée ici. Non seulement il y a la solidarité, mais il y a un fort, il y a du respect. At my site, I have loved the teamwork that I have with my community, which is very strong. Personally, what I do love the most about my site is the nature. The nature in my in my site is just amazing. Also, the people are so good and so flexible. They're so flexible to different cultures, to different people, to different religions, and also they are often flexible in trying and knowing different things. Their unity, when they say we want to do something and then they do it, that kind of spirit, their hospitality, their warmth. The way people appreciate my presence at sight and the friendship we've created. So what I love most about my community is the fact that the people are friendly. We joke, we laugh, we smile, we chat, we do everything together. And the environment is just so nice, so good. They have a lot of livestock. So yeah. I mean, it's my home. It's my home. I found a home in my community. I love the way people are willing to fight to get out of poverty. Alors, ce que nous apprécions réellement dans le village, c'est la bravoure des femmes. Les femmes sont tellement braves et elles passent la majeure partie de leur temps dans les champs à s'occuper du ménage. Et toutes ces deux activités, elles le font en même temps, en alternance. The community members are willing to work to develop their own country and because of that it made my work and my collaboration with them easier. The thing I love most about my community is the spirit they have of working hard and always willing to help each other in everything they do as a community. What I love most about my site is the nature of people. They are really friendly really supportive, very warm. You just can't pass by a person without greeting you or smiling at you. It's 
It is my great honor to introduce to you to the CEO of OCP North America and my board colleague, Kerry McNamara. OCP has invested in Core Africa since the very first cohort in Morocco in 2013 and has provided much needed funding, expertise, credibility, and friendship. We are delighted that Kerry has agreed to provide the keynote address tonight to share why they are so committed to the Core Africa volunteers. Good evening, and thank you for spending some time with Core Africa tonight. I'm always inspired by the enthusiasm, energy, and humility of the Core Africa volunteers. And I'm honored to serve on the board of this incredible organization since 2015, representing Core Africa's founding funder, the OCP Group. When Liz first approached us with this idea of Core Africa, we just knew it would be successful. As a Moroccan company deeply rooted in Africa, we're honored to help Liz, her phenomenal staff, and the hundreds of dedicated young volunteers take this vision from a pilot project in Morocco to an amazing organization now in four countries and soon in many more countries. It's a concrete example of our conviction that Africa's greatest wealth is its people, and in particular, the energy and optimism of its young people. What an incredibly formative opportunity for them to get out of their comfort zones, learning about and living in and among the challenges, but more importantly, the dynamism and dignity of the rural poor. Service to their fellow citizens becomes a crucible of their growth as future leaders and active agents of their own country's future promise. But just as importantly, they serve as a catalyst for these communities to create and own their own future. You've seen the volunteers and their wonderful projects tonight. You've seen the passion and love they bring for their communities. It's truly heartwarming. They represent the best kind of change, fueled by humility, entrepreneurship, the power of listening, collaboration, and local ownership. Please support these incredible volunteer projects and help us expand this extraordinary opportunity to young people across Africa. Thanks so much. Wow, thank you to everyone and especially to our volunteers for presenting the inspirational work the impact of this organization reaches far beyond these four projects. Core Africa has created hundreds of similar projects throughout our four countries, changing the lives of tens of thousands of people. This work is impossible without your generous support. Without donors like you, these projects will not be able to continue. If you have made a gift, I thank you. If you are still choosing your project, visit our webpage listed below to make your investment in the future. All contributions are warmly appreciated. Thank you so much, Pierre, for hosting this evening. We are so lucky to have you and all of our dedicated board members and wonderful volunteers. And again, everyone, thank you for your participation in tonight's event. I hope you found it informative and moving. Whether you are a longtime supporter or new to the Core Africa family, please know how grateful we are for your support. Thanks again. Have a wonderful evening and be safe. Good night. Bye.